The Middle Ages ended with famine and plague. It's estimated that the Black Death killed 35-60% to of Europe's population. Anthropologist Pat Shipman tells us that the Black Death was so extreme that it's surprising even to scientists who are familiar with the general details. But do you know the theories surrounding the Black Death's origins? As Shipman writes, no one knew what caused the dreadful pestilence. Some took it as divine punishment for the world's wicked ways, possibly the end of the world. Others blamed Jews, foreigners, travellers and lepers, who were shunned and turned away where once they had been welcome, or at least accepted. Some towns barricaded themselves in, afraid to let anyone in who was not already there, and equally afraid to let anyone out. Mothers abandoned husbands and children, and vice versa, for fear of catching the contagion. Few other than those in religious orders dared to nurse the sick. Sometimes houses were burned to the ground, with the inhabitants inside, if they were known to be ill. Ordinary parish burial grounds were insufficient to hold the massive numbers of dead, and new plague cemeteries were opened. With hindsight, the pandemic can be traced to the Mongol Empire which in addition to conquering with its vast army, enormous areas of Asia, opened and ensured the safety of the Silk Road for trade. Just like our trains and railways, the opening of the Silk Road under the Mongol Empire allowed relatively rapid and long-distance exchange between the East and the West in the form of people, trade and disease. As he concludes, in medieval times, where the Mongol army went, so went the plague. In the Middle Ages, Tartary, or Tartaria, was a blanket term used by Europeans to describe this vast region of Central Asia, including Mongolia. Wikipedia reiterates contemporary medieval theories as to the origins of the Black Death. Many thought it a punishment by God, that they were in the end times. They suspected the Jews were poisoning the wells. Other groups such as Friars and Romani were also blamed. Recent theories on the origin of the Black Death are 1. That it was caused by the bacterial bubonic plague, transmitted by black rats that were introduced from Asia to Europe via trade on the Silk Road. And 2. That the European outbreak began in Crimea with an act of biological warfare. This second point argues that there is evidence that the Tatars, or Mongols, deliberately spread it as a bioweapon by throwing infected corpses into European territory during the Siege of Kaffa. Plague is the original biological weapon. In 1347, the Tatars, laying siege to the Genoese-controlled Black Sea port of Kaffa, hurled the bodies of their plague victims over the city walls. When infected Genoese sailors returned to Italy, the Black Death killed one-third of Europe's population between 1347 and 1351. In his paper on the NIH website, Mark Wheelis concludes that the biological warfare theory is plausible. In this paper, he quotes a medieval account by Gabriel de Mussy, who writes, O oh God, see how the heathen Tartar races pouring together from all sides, suddenly invested the city of Kaffa and besieged the trapped Christians there for almost three years. There, hemmed in by an immense army, they could hardly draw breath, although food could be shipped in, which offered them some hope. But behold, the whole army was affected by a disease which overran the Tartars and killed thousands upon thousands every day. The dying Tartars, stunned and stupefied by the immensity of the disaster brought about by the disease, and realising that they had no hope of escape, lost interest in the siege. But they ordered corpses to be placed by catapults, and lobbed into the city in the hope that the intolerable stench would kill everyone inside. <sighs> now I'm not saying that any of these origin theories are true or correct. I wasn't alive during the Middle Ages, so I don't know. But I'd like you to consider the parallels with the end of the Middle Ages and our current day. We have a pandemic called COVID that has its origins in Asia and has spread via travel and trade, just like the Black Death supposedly did when the Mongols opened up the Silk Road. We also have a war going on in Ukraine and accusations of bio labs with potential bio warfare capabilities. Just like we have the theory of bio-warfare in Crimea by the Tatars during the Middle Ages. Again, I'm not saying that these are true or false. 
I'm not saying germ or terrain, all I'm doing is just pointing out parallels. Perhaps history is repeating itself. Perhaps a geopolitical playbook is being played once again. Or perhaps they're just arbitrary patterns. But either way, given these parallels, don't you think it's a little weird that a conspiracy that reclassifies all European and by extension American historical architecture as Tartarian has been allowed to grow and multiply over all of the internet? And it's strange, isn't it? that the Tartarian hypothesis argues that the Europeans and Americans of the past couldn't build these structures, but that they belong to a global Tartarian civilization. Calling medieval European cathedrals Tartarian is not only historically inaccurate and incorrect, but don't you think it's also a little messed up, considering the official narrative tells us that the plague, which would have killed many of those that did actually build the cathedrals, came from Tartaria. And I know most don't like to hear it, but I really do feel that someone, somewhere, is having a real good laugh at the way the Tartarian conspiracy has turned out. And now I can't see it as anything but a Trojan horse psyop, a wolf in sheep's clothing, that quietly delivers a payload of different agendas. Not only that, but it's a huge fantastical distraction. And, in light of these parallels, it's looking like a bit of a joke on us. And I think it's gotten to the point where it's blown up so much now that it really does pose some dangers in terms of the youth being exposed to the idea that their entire history is a lie and it was all Tartarian. I think it carries a very deep and entrenched Marxist ideology that many haven't considered and who stand to gain a lot by becoming aware of these ideologies. Because they can be used not only to manipulate our thinking, but also in very subtle ways online that contribute towards cultural oppression. 